I've looked at some of the scariest things in the universe, from black holes to thorn zipkoff objects to magnetars, but the horror of these things all pale into insignificance when compared to the innocuously titled Vacuum Decay. Let's find out more. But before we do, we need to think about the nature of reality, or at least what scientists think the nature of reality is. Of course, with the way science works, ideas change as we learn more about the universe. So this is all possiblies, but interesting possiblies nonetheless, based on our current understanding of the universe. Anyway, back to reality. The universe is permeated by fields, and these are a little difficult to explain. Imagine a weather map. At each point on the map, I can measure the temperature, the humidity, the wind speed, and so on. And I can sign each of these values to each point on the map. The map isn't any different, but I now understand it a little better. These values will be a little bit like the fields in the universe. A field connecting all the temperatures on the map, and a field connecting all the humidities on the map. The fields we're interested in aren't anything to do with temperature or humidity, but they tell the universe how to behave in specific ways. Though we don't even think that they really exist in a physical sense, they help us to understand the universe a little better, and they allow us to make predictions about how the universe will behave. So we know they're there, and we can see their influence. In fact, I'm sure we've all seen a field before, or at least the influence a field has. If I took a piece of paper and put a magnet underneath it, and then sprinkled iron filings on the paper, we could now see the magnet affecting the electromagnetic field, and if I measured the strength of the magnet at different points, I could map out the field. All of the different fields are a bit like this, but for other things in the universe. I hope that made sense. Scientists think that during the Planck Epoch, or in other words, before one Planck time after the start of the universe, there was just a single field. But as the universe developed, and still in its very early stages, the fields split away from each other, so that now there are many fields permeating the whole of reality. Now let's think about particles. The standard way of thinking about particles is as little blobs of matter. All the matter that we can see, and much of it that we can't, is made of atoms but atoms can be broken down smaller into electrons, protons and neutrons. And even the protons and neutrons can be further split into quarks and gluons. And here we don't think we can split the particles any further. These are what we call fundamental particles. So what do particles have to do with fields? Well, each field has its own particle associated with it. And particles are actually quantum excitations of their respective field little fluctuations in energy of that field. For instance, photons are excitations in the electromagnetic field, a little bit like a ripple on the surface of a lake. A particle is a ripple of energy in its associated field, except that the field isn't flat like the surface of a lake, it's three-dimensional to cover the whole of reality. And the particles aren't really ripples, they're more like waves in the field capable of moving through space and time. According to the standard model of physics, there are 17 different types of particle, and so the universe is permeated by 17 fields, though everything that we can see comes from just four of these fields. The atoms that make up the universe are made from up quarks, down quarks and electrons, and so we can see the waves in these three fields that makes up the particles, and what makes them visible are photons of light and so we're able to see waves in the electromagnetic field, though only waves at very specific wavelengths. Antiparticles are just opposite waves in a field. The antiparticle of an electron is called a positron, and just as two opposite waves would cancel each other out if they met, an electron and a positron, if they meet, would annihilate each other. OK, so that's reality sorted out in as far as we understand it. Sort of. But what has this all got to do with vacuum decay and the end of the universe? Well, one of the fields is a bit strange, and that's the Higgs field. Since the discovery of the Higgs boson in 2012, we've known of the existence of the Higgs field, although its existence was actually proposed in the 1960s. 
and the particles in the other fields interact with the Higgs field, this is what gives these other particles their mass. Photons, for instance, don't interact with the Higgs field at all, and so have no rest mass. Particles that have more mass interact with the Higgs field more, and the most massive particles interact with the Higgs field the most. So, what's the problem with the Higgs field? Well, the universe is full of energy. Even empty space possesses energy. And this is true of the fields that permeate reality. They all possess energy. And everything in the universe, even these fields, want to be at the lowest energy levels possible. Because this makes them the most stable that they can be. Think of it a little bit like a trough in a hilly landscape. If I have a ball and I roll it down to the bottom of the hill, it can't go any lower. It's at its lowest energy state possible, and so is stable. From measurements that physicists have made, we think that all the fields in the universe are at their lowest energy levels. When a field is at its lowest energy level, we call it its vacuum state. And this then makes all the fields that govern the universe stable. All except the Higgs field. By measuring the mass of the Higgs boson and the next heaviest particle, the top quark, physicists think that the Higgs field may have become stuck in a trough on its way down to its lowest energy state. This means that the Higgs field isn't fully stable, and we call this metastable. And because it isn't in its vacuum state, at its lowest energy levels, we call it a false vacuum. So why is this a problem? Well, the laws of physics, the laws that determine how the universe works, are based on the energy levels of our fields, and therefore are currently based on this level of energy of the Higgs field. If the energy level of the Higgs field were to suddenly drop to its vacuum state, that could have profound implications on the laws of the universe. And I'll have a look at those in a little while. But first, what might cause the Higgs field to move to its vacuum state? Well, firstly, because it's potentially metastable, that is a relatively stable state, and it would take a huge amount of energy to get it over this rise here so it could fall down to its vacuum state. Unimaginable levels of energy would be needed, more energy than we could ever produce, and more energy it would seem than has been produced anywhere in the universe so far, apart from when it first started. But there is another possibility, and that's called quantum tunnelling. We understand quantum tunnelling quite well, in relation to particles, in which a particle, or really its wave function, but don't worry about that too much, is able to avoid an energy barrier by going directly through the barrier, without gaining the energy necessary to get over it. Imagine it a little like this. Say I have a ball on one side of a hill, and I want to get the ball to the other side of the hill. Firstly, I'd have to expend energy and add that energy to the ball to roll it to the top of the hill. Once I got the ball to the top, it would then simply roll down to the bottom to be in its newer, lower energy state. Imagine though that there was a possibility that the ball instead could go through the hill without needing to gain the energy to get to the top of the hill in the first place. This is in a way what particles would do, tunnelling through the energy barrier to get to their new lower energy state. Quantum tunnelling is actually really important in a number of fields. We think that electrons involved in the process of photosynthesis, the way that plants make their food, undergo quantum tunnelling. It also affects the minimum size of electronic components. In microchips, electrons are able to tunnel through a barrier of less than one nanometer. We even think that quantum tunnelling may be responsible for ageing and cancer. If quantum tunnelling occurred with the Higgs field, this would create a little bubble of universe where the Higgs field was actually at a lower energy level, and therefore more stable. This bubble of stability would then cause the universe around it to undergo the same change, and so on. This then bubble of stability would expand throughout the universe at the speed of light. And this wouldn't be good. Well, certainly not for us. This change to the Higgs field would change the laws of physics. We don't really know what effect it might have, but since the Higgs field affects the mass of particles, it may affect that. 
It might be something fairly minor in universal terms, such as a changing of the mass of a neutrino, but it might affect the mass of other fundamental particles. It may mean that protons and neutrons are no longer able to hold themselves together in the nuclei of atoms, or even that the protons and neutrons themselves may fall apart. This would leave a trail of destruction hurtling across the universe at the speed of light. The wavefront may contain huge amounts of energy, destroying all it comes into contact with. Planets, stars and nebulae. Nothing will be safe from the destructive power of the stable vacuum, as a cataclysmic wave spread throughout the universe, leaving in its wake a totally different universe. On one side of the wavefront, everything will be normal, on the other side, nothing will ever be the same again. So, should we be worrying about the possible destruction of the universe? Well, in all probability, no, for a number of reasons. Firstly, if it does happen, there's absolutely nothing you or I or any of us can do about it, so it's pointless worrying. As this bubble of destruction travels at the speed of light, we wouldn't even see it coming. We get no warning, we wouldn't see a patch of stars getting dark, signifying an expanding bubble. As a light from those dying stars reached us, so would the wave of destruction. Also, the universe is very big. A bubble may take billions of years to get to us, and because the universe is expanding very, very quickly, it might never reach us, as it'll just keep getting further and further away as the universe expands. In addition, measurements of the Higgs boson have only given us a range of values for the mass. At one extreme, this range gives us a value that would indicate metastability, and the possibility that the Higgs field isn't at its lowest energy level. However, at the other extreme, the mass of the Higgs boson would suggest a stable field which is already at its lowest energy or vacuum state. In addition, even if the Higgs field is metastable, it may well last in this state for a long time, many, many billions of years, up to even 10 to the power of 100 years. This would take the universe way beyond the age of stars. At just 10 to the 14 years or 100 trillion years in the future, it's estimated that the whole of the Milky Way galaxy will only contain about 100 glowing stars produced by the collisions of other stellar bodies. 10 to the 100 years would take the universe way beyond that, to a time when even most of the black holes will have evaporated by Hawking radiation. In fact, collapse of a false vacuum at a time like this may actually be a good thing for the universe, and may change things in ways we don't understand yet. So there really isn't anything to worry about. Well, it seems like we've come quite a way into the future and now everything's got a bit strange. So I think it's time to return home and for now, and until next time, thank you for watching.